Shalom, Shalom. Seeing a new name, Kyoko Banyamyan. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get ready to get started. My intent is to get through this quickly. So I'm gonna to try to get through this quickly. So I came across a video and the spirit jumped on me to do a lesson about it before we get started. Shalom. Barak ta Yahawa. Barak ta Yahawa Shai. Barak ta Yahawa. Barak ta Yahawa Shai. Kaho Laimla Yahawa. Bahashem Yahawa Shai. Bahashem or Kadash. All praises be to the Most High, Yahawa, in the name of His Son and our Lord and Savior, Yahawa Shai. Much respect and honor to the brothers that are doing the work in truth and sincerity, risking their lives and freedom to do so, and pushing this gospel throughout the four corners of the earth. Salutations to the hopeful elect that are scattered abroad. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders and great millstone. Coming back at you with another lesson. Days of darkness lie ahead of us. So the Most High does everything through signs and wonders. So he speaks to us through the elements of the universe. And that includes the men of the Lord. Everything that was made was made for his sake and to serve his purpose. So he speaks to us if we're paying attention and he uses people, places, and things to communicate his message. The stones would cry out if we did not speak. Let's go to Sirach 18. <coughs> the book of Sirach chapter 18. Verse 1, he that liveth forever have created all things in general. The Lord only is righteousness, and there is none but he who governeth the world with the palm of his hand, and all things obey his will, for he is the king of all by his power dividing holy things among them from profane. So the Lord is using people, places, and things to communicate his message. So once again, our praises to Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, and double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And to the beloved of the hopeful elect, Barack Thumb and Shalom. So there's a video that I want to play. And before I play this video, I need to read the copyright disclaimer under section 107. Because they're messing with me on these videos. Every time I play a video, I get a copyright strike. So I'm going to play, I'm going to read this copyright disclaimer. <clears throat> copyright disclaimer under section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news, reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. So once again, I do not profit from these videos. <clears throat> Let's continue. Ow. But the amazing thing is people don't know the solar eclipse is happening on the very same day as the original plagues of the three days of darkness began. No, 
Yes. Yes. Okay. It's on okay, the okay. very same day. This one. This. This. This one. We're this getting ready April. To have. April eighth is the very day of the three days of darkness. Plagues began in the in original the land of Exodus. Egypt. Yes. Unbelievable. Is this a warning? Then is God? It's going. <laughs> we got the Nineveh and the Jonah towns going through. But I mean, is what kind of warning is this? Great question. Here's the thing. In Genesis one fourteen, God declared. Yep. The sun and the moon were for signs. Right. The only signs they can give is eclipses. All right. And the nice thing about eclipses, no false prophet can manipulate it. No. Okay. And they speak to every language, tribe, nation, and tongue. Yep. They don't need to be translated. Nope. Solar eclipse means judgment is coming upon a nation. Lunar eclipse refers to judgment coming upon Israel. Okay. Now, get a load of this. There has only been, since we become a nation in 1776, there has only been eight total solar eclipses that have completely crossed the United States. I'm not talking about one that just clips California or Florida. I'm talking that traverses the whole United States horizontally or vertically. There's only been eight since we became a nation. Wow. And guess when they occurred? Two of them occurred during the revolutionary war three of them occurred during the civil war two of them occurred during the vietnam war are we getting a hint of what this oh, means oh no and so now in the 2000s there was 2017 and now this one in 2024 and it's like a bullseye it forms an x right over the united states now here's what's amazing of those eight only one which was the one seven years ago, it only crossed the United States and no other country. The other ones crossed Mexico and Canada and U.S. or something right. like that. But the United States was singled out with Just the one, one seven years ago. Yes. Once. Wow. And now we have April 8th on Nissan 1. That Nissan 1 is the same day the glory of God fell. It's the same day of the inauguration ceremony of Moses' tabernacle. Okay, this is when this eclipse crosses these two places in the United States. And it's definitely God wants to communicate with us. People have to understand God wants to communicate. These eclipses are communications directly from God warning us of what's coming. I mean, this is without a question, a biblical sign. I was telling people yeah. uh, earlier that. You know, you got the solar eclipses. That's God made. You, when you have a moon, a lunar eclipse or a blood moon that you were yep. so famous of bringing forward, that's a God sign. The There's two different types of locusts coming. You know, we know that. Yeah. You know, there's all, all of these signs that are coming right now are all God signs. They're not man-made, not no. man-manipulated. It right. isn't Y2K. Right. Okay. It's not the mind calendar. Right. It's not Harold Camping <laughs> predicting the rapture, right. all of which exactly. man made and failed. These yes. are God's signs. You can't run from these. These are biblical, right? Ex that's the whole point. See, the problem is the church is on the wrong calendar because our regular calendar is based only on the sun. That's the, wrong. And, that's wrong. And I, Iran uses the same calendar we do. Okay. Then you have the Muslim calendar, which is only based on the moon. Now, they're both scientifically accurate, but they're not the one God uses. Like if I'm meeting with you, we have a two or three hour time difference. Right. If we're going to meet, we got to agree on what time. Right. God is the master of time. And if you're a slave, who controls your time? The master. The master he tells you does. when to go to bed, when to get up, when to do this. God, the first commandment. Most people don't realize, you know, the very first commandment wasn't given on Mount Sinai. The very first commandment was given in Egypt, and it was get on my calendar. Nisan wow. 1 is the first day. He wants his people on his calendar. Well, in Genesis 1, 14, it says, let them determine the times, not let the sun, not let the moon. But the reason why, you can only have a solar eclipse on a new moon. You can only have a lunar eclipse that's on a true. full moon. That's so true. that's why he says, okay, your months are based on the new moon. This is where I can communicate with you. Yep. Okay. Passover and Sukkot are on a full moon. So I can yep. communicate with you. Because it's the appointed times. Appointed times. Exactly. It is. 
So they, you know, they made some very heavy statements in there. So a solar eclipse only occurs on the new moon. So this is a sign. Remember, the moon shall not give her light. And a lunar eclipse only occurs on a full moon, where the day that Yahweh Shai was crucified on, and they met that last supper, the Passover, and that day prior. <coughs> and the Passover goes into the evening. The 14th day at evening is the Passover. So the thing is, the children of this world are wiser than the children of light. Edomites conduct a deep search. They conduct a deep search. Many Jakes play games. If it's not a barbecue pork menu, they're not interested in reading. So we're going to go into a few things. I saw some scriptures posted. Let's go ahead and read these, Brother Aramya. Exodus 9 and 13. And the Lord said unto Moses, Rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, Let my people go, that they may serve me. So we're entered into a prison release date. Let me say that again. We're entering into a prison release release date. <clears throat> now we got to understand reading these prophecies, the Most High does everything in order. So the key characters are very important. Let's read that again. And the Lord said unto Moses, rise up early in the morning and stand before Pharaoh and say unto him, thus saith the Lord God of the Hebrews, let my people go that they may serve me. So the yoke of our bondage is getting ready to be broken. Our chains is getting ready to be released. And the chains pursuant to Revelation 20 is getting ready to be placed on Edom, followed by the cohort of nations following him. Exodus 9 and 14, for I will at this time Send all my plagues upon thine heart and upon thy servants and upon thy people that thou mayest know that there is none like me in all the earth. Beautiful. So these plagues are going to start here in America, but the entire world is getting ready to be shooken up because they're following the ways of the daughter of Babylon. All nations have drank from her wine of idolatry, spiritual fornication, false Christianity, a democratic system, rule of the demons, demo, demons, cratic, rule of. <coughs> but the major destruction takes place in the daughter of Babylon. Matter of fact, let's go here. We're gonna go to the book of Exodus Let's stay in Exodus and go to 10. Shalom, beloved. Yahweh Barashem, Yahweh Shai, Barak Atham, Barashem Kakadash. See, Exodus 10 and 21. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thine hand toward heaven, that there may be darkness over the land of Egypt, even darkness which may be felt. So notice in the video, they mentioned April 8th, the same date that three days of darkness fell on ancient Egypt. Another note of major significance, the crosshairs where this second solar eclipse is going to intersect is where? Southern Illinois, in a place called Little Egypt. Little, Little Egypt. It's where that second solar eclipse is going to intersect. You can't make this up. What else? The second solar eclipse is going to pass through seven cities named Nineveh. And Nineveh was destroyed 
some years after the prophecy of Jonah. So it was destroyed during Tobit's time. So just a few little details that they left out. So in a new moon, the moon has a dark face in the new moon. A dark face. <clears throat> Let's go to Amos 5 and 18, brother, awaken to truth. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Beautiful. So many people think they're going to just waltz into the kingdom without laboring to please our Heavenly Father through Yahweh, his mediator. This is not a cakewalk. We must suffer and we must sacrifice in this flesh in order to be found worthy to serve the king. So we are under the affliction of the king, Yahweh. If we're not, or getting consolation on this side, then we're living a lie. We're supposed to suffer as Yahweh Shai suffered. Amos 5 and 18 again. Woe unto you that desire the day of the Lord. To what end is it for you? The day of the Lord is darkness and not light. Look at IUIC. They built a $150 million enterprise teaching a Hebrew Israelite universal doctrine. And when in distress, just call on Jesus Christ. Were we not enslaved under Jesus Christ? <clears throat> Esau, you tell me. Caesarea Borgia, the second son of the sixth pope of Rome. So why are we calling on Jesus Christ? So woe unto you, Israel united in Christ and the gathering of Christ's church. Amos 5 and 19, as if a man did flee from a lion and a bear met him or went into the house and leaned his hand on the wall and a serpent bit him. So there was no escaping the Lord's judgment. He controls people, nations, tongues, places, things. All, cre all creatures are his, that we read in Sirach 18. Amos 5 and 20. Shall not the day of the Lord be darkness and not light, even very dark and no brightness in it? So this is going to be a time of terror when the Lord comes. There's many perpetrators, pretenders, gainsayers. Fakers, fake it till you make it. Let's go to Exodus 10 and 22. And Moses stretched forth his hand toward heaven, and there was a thick darkness in all the land of Egypt three days. They saw not one another, neither rose any from his place for three days. But all the children of Israel had light in their dwellings. So this light is this truth, which is a lamp unto our feet. So the day of the Lord is filled with terror. Darkness is going to cover the entire earth at his appearance. Let's get that. One moment. I want to pull something up. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's read this one. We're going to go here to the book of Ezekiel 34. Ezekiel 34. And this connects to Matthew 18 and 11 that they remove out of the New Living Translation. This chapter right, right here connects beautifully to Matthew 18 and 11 that he's coming to save the Israelites, the lost sheep, of the house of Israel. 
Let's read it. <clears throat> Ezekiel 34 and 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out. So Matthew 18 and 11, Yahweh Shai says he's sent to, let's get it, because I'm getting ready to butcher it. <laughs> let's get it. Matthew 18 and 11. For the Son of Man is come to save that which was lost. So they removed that scripture in the New Living Translation. So let's go to where Yahawashai was pulling from. Let's go to Ezekiel 34 and 11. For thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I, even I, will both search my sheep and seek them out as a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered, watch this, in the cloudy and dark day. So that's a cut. So this darkness is going to cover the earth. But remember, the major delivery is out of the daughter of Babylon in the cloudy and dark day. So the moon is not going to give her light. The sun is, well, we'll read it. We got to read that again. Ezekiel 34 and 12. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered. So will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. So remember, the elect is going to be caught up into the chariot of the Lord out of every nation where we've been scattered. But the bulk of the elect dwells in the daughter of Babylon. The belly of the beast, America. Ezekiel 34 and 13. And I will bring them out from the people and gather them from the countries and will bring them to their own land and feed them upon the mountains of Israel by the rivers and in all the inhabited places of the country. So we're going to be saved. This is deliverance, salvation. This is exodus from spiritual Sodom in Egypt. And the key characters must be on the scene because the Most High does not change. And he does everything in order. Everything. He's stuck on his ways. He's stuck on his ways. See, let's go to Isaiah 13 and 12. Isaiah 13 and 12. So when we're reading this, we got to keep it in context. Remember, destruction is coming upon the earth during this time. So the elect men are going to be changed. <clears throat> Isaiah 13 and 12. I will make a man more precious than fine gold even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. So the men are going to be changed and lead the nation of Israel, the house of David, his leaders, the new governor, the new governorship. See, watch this. Therefore, will I shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger. So that day of the fierce anger is a burnt offering, a nuclear holocaust, which means burnt offering. So the men are going to be changed and then followed by the remnant of the elect. But the men are leading the congregation of Israel. See that? <clears throat> There's more. Let's go up. Isaiah 13 and 9. Then, then shall it be known who are my chosen, 
So when the Most High lifts up a standard, that standard is fire. How do we know that? Well, let's, let's see. Let's go to Jeremiah 51. Not going to make this long at all. <laughs> Jeremiah 51. So remember, he's going to bring the elect through the fire. So a change must take place. But the leaders of the nation of Israel are men. The, the pillars of the new kingdom to come. Jeremiah 51. Right here. Nope, it's in Jeremiah 50. One moment. That's what happens when you don't read it in a while. Jeremiah 51. Yeah, I was in the right chapter. Jeremiah 51, and we're going to go to verse 11. See, Jeremiah 51, verse 11. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. So the arrows are intercontinental ballistic missiles. We still use ballistic shield in the military today. That's the, that's the uh, intercept umbrella that intercepts missiles coming into your base or into your nation. It's called a ballistic shield or air defense. It's under the air defense um branch and it's called a ballistic shield so we got to read you might as well get uh jeremiah 51 11 and 12 that standard make bright the arrows gather the shields the lord have raised up the spirit of the kings of the medes for his device is against babylon to destroy it because it is the vengeance of the lord the vengeance of his temple. So he's doing this for the elect's sake, his temple. So we are the church and the kingdom of heaven. So that standard is fire, judgment. <clears throat> right here, Jeremiah 51 and 12, set up the standard upon the walls of Babylon. Make the watch strong, set up the watchmen, prepare the ambushes. For the Lord have both devised and done that which he spake against the inhabitants of Babylon, the major site of delivery and judgment. Remember when you read Edom in the Zondervan Compact Bible Dictionary, Edom figures prominently in future prophecy as the place of great major judgments. So we cannot separate the daughter of Babylon from Edom. Remember, Babylon or America goes into perdition. Esau is that man of sin, the son of perdition. So we cannot separate Edom from the daughter of Babylon, from Rome. <coughs> Esau, Edom, the man of sin, the son of perdition and America is prophesied in Revelation 17 that she goeth into perdition. So when we read Isaiah 50, Isaiah 59, verse 19 and 20, when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. Fire. But the elect are going to be changed <clears throat> to survive and be caught up into the Cadillacs of the skies, the chariots of the Lord, the so-called UFOs. Let's read about that. And we'll get ready to close out. <clears throat> Isaiah 13 and 9. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel both with wrath and fierce anger to lay the land desolate and he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. So this God loves 
the sinner but hates the sin, that is a damn lie. So I guess the Bible is off then. The Most High does not like sinners. Isaiah 13 and 10. For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. A dark-faced moon. So there's several days of that moon not having a lit face. Going into the middle of that month. Remember, month goes back to the Hebrew word hadash. And really, this is heavy. I ain't trying to get too deep. But the devil shall cast some of you into prison. Be thou faithful ten days, and I will give thee the crown of life. So there's about a two-week period in there of, of that moon not having a full-lit face. Which is closer to, to ten days, but I'm not trying to go too deep. So the Bible is spot on. So the new moon marks the major holy days, Passover, deliverance. <clears throat> Let's read that again. Isaiah 13 and 10. For the stars of heaven and the consolations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. So the darkest moon is the new moon, or Hadash, the new month. And I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity, and I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. So there's a lot going on here. Whenever we're reading the Bible, we can't read it like we're reading a high school romance love novel. And you see, so the major destruction is also going to create blackness, darkness, soot, which is going to blot out the sky and create a, a winter effect because no, no sunlight or, or no heat. The entire sky is going to be darkened out. Nothing, no type of light. It's going to be total darkness and blackness and a dark faced moon. So there's a lot going on here. Major destruction, debris, soot, blackness, um, chaff, fire and smoke, total chaos and confusion. See? To refresh our memory, let's go back here. Ezekiel 34 and 12. As a shepherd seeketh out his flock in the day that he is among his sheep that are scattered, so will I seek out my sheep and will deliver them out of all places where they have been scattered in the cloudy and dark day. So you got the dark face moon going on. You got massive debris and soot, dark black smoke, darkness of the sky in general. Nothing but fear and terror. Total fear and terror. Matter of fact, let's get this. Since I said that, we got to go to Job 18. <coughs> Job 18. Remember, the Bible calls Yahawashai, the what? The king of terror. We've been given this uchi kuchi muchi hippie Jesus with blonde hair and blue eyes that loves everybody and just wants to hug you. Always, when I, when I was growing up, I would see a picture of him like this with his arms wide open. And a lot of you Israelites, you just, you fell for it. Hook, line, and, and sinker. You fell for it. Who is this all-loving God that allows me to be a niglet? I, I don't understand. Because he don't match the scriptures. 
See, let's go here to Job 18. Job 18, verse 13. Let's go to verse 12. Nope, we got to go to 11. Terrace, say what? Terror shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him to his feet. See, so that darkness is going to cover the earth, but the center of gravity, if you will, ground zero is America, the daughter of Babylon. So terrors, fire, soot, judgment, and the chariots of the Lord, the angels are tall, dark-skinned men with woolly hair. What do you think these Edomites going to do when they see the angels? You see, scared out of their wits. Wits go back to wisdom. So they're not going to even be able to complete a sentence. Absolutely through. The hell is this? Tall, dark-skinned, buff, pissed-off angels on how you've treated their brothers here. The so-called Negroes, Native Americans, and Latinos. So when somebody is terrified out of their wits, they can't even think straight. Total fear. Let's read that again. Job 18 and 11. Terrors shall make him afraid on every side and shall drive him to his feet. So they're in full defense. His strength shall be hunger bitten and destruction shall be ready at his side. So there is judgment all around him. You got the fires going on. You got the chariots of the Lord descending. You got the elect being caught up and changed. Yep, the day the earth stood still. That's right. The Most High can make the sun stand still. It shall devour the strength of his skin, even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. That firstborn of death is Yahawashai. This lines up with Colossians 1, somewhere around verse 15 through 17. That firstborn of death, that's Yahawashai, which is also the angel of the Lord that dealt with Moses. So his strength this is his military industrial complex that he's built up the revised Roman Empire under a military industrial complex by his sword. Is that not written in Genesis 27? By thy sword shalt thou live. So he's built up his strength, his empire, by his blessing, bloodshed which hinges on the sword. Let's read this by the beloved brother. Who is that firstborn of death? Yeah, we need one more in there that shows he's the firstborn of death. Where is it at? One moment. Right here. Yeah, right here. Colossians 1, verse 15 who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth, visible and invisible, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by him and for him. And he is before all things and by him all things consist. Verse 18, and he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, that in all things he might have the preeminence. So he's going to set his creation back up in order. That's right. Number eight is the bullseye. Uh, and that's the spirit because I was looking for it and you had already posted it. See? So that king of terror is Yahweh Shai, after the image of the Most High. The Most High created Yahweh Shai, who created all things.
Yep. Job 18, verse. Let's go back up. Job 18. Let's go to verse. Thirteen, it shall devour the strength of his skin. Even the firstborn of death shall devour his strength. So Yahweh Shai gave him the blessing of the sword, the military industrial complex, as Isaac. So he's going to take down what he commissioned or put in place to fulfill Bible prophecy. His confidence shall be rooted out of his tabernacle and it shall bring him to the king of terrors. So that king of terrors, Yahweh Bahashem, Yahweh Shai. See, a day of darkness and gloominess, a day of thick smoke, dark clouds, massive destruction and death. The day of the Lord is terrible. Let's close out in, in um, the New Testament. One moment. Yeah, and I've gone into this before. I just want to check something real quick. <clears throat> all right, let's go ahead and get it. I didn't want to make this long at all. Let's go to the New Testament. And I've went into this before. The new matches the Old Testament. You got bug outs out there talking about don't read the New Testament, only the Old. Or you got bug out saying don't read the Old Testament because it's done away with. That makes you bug out. You just decapitate, de decapitated Yahweh Shai, which is the word made flesh. He comes in the volume of the book. You bug outs need a muzzle over your mouth. It needs to be taped and leather strap with a padlock over your forehead, the top of your head, and the bottom of your chin. Be quiet. My goodness. Let's go to Matthew 27 and 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness over all the land unto the ninth hour. Beautiful. See? So that darkness is going to cover the land, all the land on the day of judgment. Mark 15 and 33. And when the sixth hour was come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. See? So this is a mark, a signature of the great and terrible day of the Lord. Darkness, thick smoke and clouds. Let's close out with Luke 23 and 44. And it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. See that? So remember, Yahweh Shai is the light of the world in the beginning. God created heaven and earth, and the earth was without light, and darkness covered the face of the earth, something like that. So Yahweh Shai is coming to a land of gross darkness, and literally, it's going to be darkness. Yep, right here. Brother Gabar Ayash, Zephaniah 1 and 14. The great day of the Lord is near. It is near and hasteth greatly. Even the voice of the day of the Lord, the mighty men shall cry there bitterly. So all this military and special forces and army, Marines, Air Force, they're going to be crying like little toddlers and two-year-olds that haven't been given their milk or pacifier. Everybody's going to shrivel up in that day. That day is a day of wrath, a day of trouble and distress, a day of wasteness and desolation, a day of darkness and gloominess, 
a day of clouds and thick darkness. Beautiful. Massive destruction and catastrophes. Fires, thick smoke, a dark-faced moon or blackened moon. A day of the trumpet, Zephaniah 1 and 16, a day of the trumpet and alarm against the fenced cities and against the high towers. So the daughter of Babylon is going to be brought down. She is the modern-day Jericho. Shalom, beloved elder Gabar, Amalan Gabar. You see? So the walls of Jericho is getting ready to come down. America is the spiritual Jericho. Her walls are getting ready to come crumbling down. Followed by the nations that are under her or the kings of the earth. See, let's go back to Luke 23 and 44. And it was about the sixth hour and there was a darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. And the sun was darkened, and the veil of the temple was rent in the midst. Beautiful. So we're going to see a similar act take place here on earth. I don't want to write this eye. I live to see that day. I want to live to see Yahweh Shai and be changed like unto him, and see the fall and destruction of our enemies. I pray for that. One moment. I'm going to get ready to close out and end it here. I'm just going to check something real quick. <clears throat> so the sun and the moon are for signs. But remember, the new moon marks our holy days and marks major events taking place, key events. Let's pull something up here. Yeah, there's a scripture I'm going to read that proves that, how insignificant the new moon is. Let's go here to the book of... Um, Let's go to Sirach 46. See? Sirach 46. No, Sirach 43 and 6. Sirach 43 and 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. A what? A sign of the world. A what? a sign of the world. So we're going to enter into a new age being ushered in. The Bibles tell us Esau is the end of the world. Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. So this new moon is not to be taken lightly. That's the dark face moon. Okay? These are signs of the changing of time and seasons. Sirach 43 and 6. He made the moon also to serve in her season for a declaration of times and a sign of the world. From the moon is the sign of feast, a light that declareth, a light that decreaseth in her perfection. Beautiful. So it starts... <coughs> It starts going back to that new moon to reset the month. Remember that word moon in the Hebrew, hadash, hadash, new moon, new month, which also marks new holy days, new feast days. Let's read that again. Sirach 43 and 6. From the moon is the sign of feast a light that decreases in her perfection. The month is called after her name, Hadash. The what? The month is called after her name, increasing wonderfully in her changing, being an instrument of the armies above, shining in the firmament of heaven. So the Lord is coming, 
traveling in the greatness of his strength, mighty to save. The hosts of heaven are coming. Armies, when you go into that word hosts, armies, these are angels of the Lord, not little green men from Mars or little ogres, okay? <clears throat> these are angels of the Lord. These are our brothers, dark-skinned men, about six five to seven foot tall. Esau is going to be terrified seeing the angels, big, buff, pissed off, dark-skinned men with woolly hair. You think he's scared of us now? Wait until he see the angels and the Israelite men in those new bodies. It's on like Donkey Kong. It's on. Okay? <laughs> so all that three-fifths of a man and second-class citizen and Negro, all of that, you got to pay for that. Everything we do in this life comes with a price. Nothing in this world is free. Nothing in this world is free. You might get away with your bullshit at first, but see, that just stacks up until payday. All right? You thought you got away with it and stuffed all that away somewhere. Nope. It's still right there at your back door. You got to pay for that. Nothing in this world is free, sleazy. Let's go here and close out. Brother Gabar Adama, Isaiah 66 and 23. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. So the law, statutes, commandments are not done away with. Nimwits. See, we just read it. <clears throat> so everything is based on the new moon, our feasts, our, our high holy days. Come on now. Feast of Tabernacles. Come on. <clears throat> Isaiah 66 and 24. And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the men that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. So the Israelites' heaven is the Edomites' hell. This is not literal that worms is going to be crawling out of their body and they're going to be screaming like, you know, it's alive! It's alive! No, it's, they're going to be in torment. They're going to be peasants, peasant class in a total state of decay and ruin. They're going back to, to the peasants that they are. When you look up the Rothschilds, their name was Bauer, which means peasant. So they're, they're getting ready to be beat down to the peasant class that they are. This stolen identity is it's done away with. It's been unveiled, uncovered. So this man has been made bare. Is that not written? Behold, I have made Esau bear. So in the kingdom, they're going to be on full display at the bottom. Slaves and in torment. When, ooh, when you read Luke 16, Yahweh Shai was talking about right now. That rich man, he was talking about the, the elite, the global international bankers, the rich ruling elite, well, wealthy ruling elite. That's the rich man, which is Amalek, but it's talking about a, a nation of them. Amalek, that's the rich man. He was talking about right now. The 13 Illuminati families, that's right, Red Shield, which goes back to, in the German, Rothschild, Rothschild, Red Child or Red Shield. They are the red children. Esau, the first came out red all over like a hairy garment. And he called his name Aisha, or Aisha Shira, Aisha Shira. Wasted away is he. So their name is a nomen omen. Aisha, or Aisha Shira. Wasted away is he. That's a nomen omen. They're going to be wasted away over the course of time. 1,000 years of hardcore slavery on the mighty men not weak, effeminate men that you see walking around on this earth today with the thumb up their backside and bouncing up and down. 
These are going to be real men. Remember, we read that in Isaiah 13. I will make a man more precious than the golden wedge of Ophir. So these are going to be refined men, real men, not brokebacks, real men, refined. Okay, not caught up in their feelings. They're human beings too. Look what they did to us. We ain't going to have those type of men where we arguing back and forth, beating their backs out, and some simp talking about, hey, yo, man, let off off, let off off them a little bit, man. We ain't going to be dealing with that madness here, okay? It's almost time to pay for these crimes. Everything we do in this life comes with a price. Nothing in this world is free. Hopefully this lesson has been edifying. All praises to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, or Kakadash. Double honor and respect to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. Much love, honor, and respect to the beloved and hopeful elect of the house of Israel, of the house of David, to the 144,000 mighty men, Barak of Thumb, Shalom, and to the beloved ladies of the hopeful elect of the house of David, listening and learning in meekness and humility as the scriptures have commanded to do so. To you we say, Barak of Thumb, bless you all. Barak of Thumb, bless you all. Shalom, peace be unto you. See you on the next lesson, Lord willing. Or Adawan, Adawan Rathazah. Kwam Yashawala, rise, Israel, rise. And abide the Baal. Destruction to Babylon. Shalom.